Yeah, good day, guys. It's Shaney with the Backyard Bushman channel. How you doing? Uh, out here camping this weekend, trying to do a couple of videos, and uh, wanted to do uh, do a quick video on uh, some fire starting. Uh, you know, fire starting is one of those things you might take for granted. Granted, I should say, uh, you're in Boy Scouts. It seems pretty easy. You know, we're always the barbecues and this uh, chemical fire starter and this thing and that thing. And uh, at any rate, it's not always as simple as you'd like. Um, you know, if you're in the middle of the bush and you don't have many options. You need to get a fire going to stay warm and to cook food, whatever it might be. A little bit of practice goes a long way. So there are many methods to starting a fire, building a fire especially. I wanted to start on some really, really simple stuff, um, stuff that I prefer. And uh, hopefully, you know, for anybody who's, uh, who's looking to practice their, their fire starting skills, this will help you out. So bear with me. There we are, guys. You can see uh, I've got the campsite fire going in the background there because I am on a campsite. Of course, I can't just put a fire wherever I'd like. Um, and as you can see in the uh, in the front there, we got some sticks and we got some leaves. Now this is this is pretty important stuff, and I'm sure you've heard it all before. Before you want to uh, get to building a fire or even starting a fire, you want to make sure that you have the materials required. So over there, I have some dead fern, I have some dead leaves, and that's going to be my starter. Okay, over here we have some uh, we have some tinder. So those little twigs there. Now tinder typically, you know, you want to make sure it's dry. If not, you can get around that. But we're not going to cover that in this video. Uh, you tend to, you want it about no thicker than a french fry, I guess. Um, but they're, they're matchstick size. Um, you know, for the most part, they're really easy to snap, which is pretty good. And they're easy to, easy to light. So you want a good bundle of that. And over here, we have some kindling. And as you can see, kindling is larger again. Uh, kindling is about the thickness of your finger or so. Again, you preferably want to get it dry. Um, save yourself some drama. And then after that, of course, we have fuel. You can see it's shrink wrapped. It's got a rope handle on that there reason for that guys of course is as I said I'm at a campsite and they prefer that you don't go around chopping down your wood uh, they prefer that you leave the natural habitat as is um, and so we went and bought some wood which was which was perfectly acceptable the price was right for anybody thinking of going out to a campsite and just chopping down their own wood please keep in mind that whether it's dead or it's alive that there are creatures that are using that for their uh, you know for their their life basically um, you know you might think that dead log isn't doing anybody any good but there's all kinds of larvae and insects and bugs in there and they play an integral role in the uh, the uh, the life circle, whatever the heck it's called. <laughs> anyway, so let's get uh, let's get onto how we're going to start this fire. Well, there you go, guys. You've seen the types of wood that you're going to need, the piles you want to sort out before you uh, before you get to making a fire. And now, of course, the other thing is that, uh, that you need to consider is ignition. Now, anybody in their right mind is going to be prepared for a situation. Um, you can have a lighter or whatever it is. Uh, if you're like me, you have you know a couple of different. Uh, uh, ways to start a fire because redund redundancy is a good thing um, but worst case scenario you know you can rely on primitive methods you got the bow drill and so on and so forth but at any rate talking about being prepared of course I'm out camping so of course I don't leave home without my fire kit here you might have seen this on another video it's got a couple things it's got a, a mini Bic lighter it's got a uh, candle in there have some Carmex we have some cotton balls and some fire tablets um, and what I'm going to do today is to start as far as I'm going to use uh, my first CM rod, my fire steel, which is on my uh, ADC keychain here. And I'm going to rub some of that Carmex on one of those cotton balls, or a couple of those cotton balls, turn it into a little candle, basically. We're going to throw that under the uh, the dead fern and the dead leaves there. Uh, but first, we want to build this fire uh, to give you a good example of, of a simple way to construct a fire that's sure to work uh, just about every time. Here anyway, I guys. Uh, you can see what I've done there. It's really simple. Uh, this is an, uh, an ideal setup, of course, but I'm, uh, you know, just for the purpose of demonstration. What you can see I've done there is I've gotten a big block of that, that uh, lumber. Um, you could use a rock alternatively, and basically all I've made is a lean-to. It's just the same principle as the shelter, and this is, this is known as a lean-to fire. So what you're doing here is uh, you've got yourself a wall, okay? It's kind of your foundation. You want to start out with your dry tinder down the bottom here, of course, okay? Um, and then you put your tinder on top, and on top of that you got your kindling. Everything is leaning on top of this log here, okay? You're going to light it from underneath, of course, and the purpose of this system is half of that crap's going to burn out, but it's going to allow you to get a good airflow underneath your wood, and that's a really important thing when you're building a fire. You've probably seen the pyramid, uh, the pyramid method for building a fire, which works great, by the way, but personally I find that this is just a little easier, and the reason I like that is because the pyramid, more often than not, it'll turn a collapse on itself. Okay, you start putting heavier fuel on there and whatnot. It's a great fire, don't get me wrong. But this log here, you can guarantee that she's going to last quite a while. So when it comes to putting in some heavier lumber and whatnot, okay, you can just rest it straight on top. And as long as you build it specifically enough, your fire isn't in danger of collapsing. 
Okay, plenty of oxygen. Once she gets going, you can start building from the other side and whatnot, and you'll end up with a good, normal size fire in no time. Um, so, give me a second here. I'm going to go grab my fire kit and see if I, uh, I can't get this bad boy started. There we go, guys. So, I've, uh, I've got to put some cotton balls in there with the Carmex. Um, Carmex works just like Vaseline, of course. It's petroleum-based, and I've just got a little dull squeeze tube. Um, a fire kit's not for months and months on end use, of course. It's kind of an emergency deal. That'll work just fine. So I'm going to use my uh, my fire steel here. There's a little striker I made out of an old jigsaw handle, of course. Basically, just going to hold that down. Give it a couple shots. She's a light. Okay, simple as that. Oh, it'll burn pretty good because of that Carmex. If you want to soak your cotton balls in Vaseline, uh, that's that's more than okay, of course. Um, it'll work a, a little better than this. It'll burn a little better. But I just prefer to be able to carry that Carmex because I can rub it on anything. Of course, it's going to set those twigs off there. And after the leaves, just burn it away. Now, another thing to notice here, guys, is it's been raining and it's starting again now, actually. So we're going to try and beat the rain out. Um, the ground here is wet. Okay, wet ground is not great for fire making. Okay, in all honesty, it's pretty miserable. Um, I don't know specifically the uh, the science of that. It could be that you're heating up the ground and just causing a bunch of steam. And of course, steam isn't going to help you fire any. Uh, but as you can see, we're beating out the beating out the wet ground there. We got a flame coming up under these sticks, and uh, in no time at all, we should have a good fire. Get going. There we go. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Like I said, everything I'm using is wet, so there's going to be some trial and error involved here. I reckon that's going to go pretty well. Um, but don't get me wrong. There's been plenty of times I've tried to start a fire, and she's just she's died out the second I thought I had it right. Um, one of the things you've got to remember, of course, is not to uh, micromanage your fire. You don't want to sit there and stoke it and poke it and prod it and all out of the rubbish. Okay, put more stuff on there. You might overload your fire. Let me move that. Inside there. That'll work a little better. There you go, guys. It took a little coaxing, but as you can see, we got a fire going in there. No worries. Just had to give it a little oxygen, spin a little temperamental, and it's that kind of thing that, you know, keep an eye on it. Like I said, don't overdo it. If you feel that it's needed, go gently. Don't blow too hard or anything like that. And uh, you're on your way to uh, staying warm and cooking your dinner. Anyway, once again, this has been Shane with the Backyard Bushman. And uh, no worries. Thanks for watching again, guys, and we'll catch you guys next time. There we go, guys. This is about two minutes after I, uh, actually, it's not even that, about 30 seconds after I turned it off. As you can see, that fire's going on our own right now. Kind of had to bolt out there for a second. Had the, had the park ranger rolling past them. All they're great people. I'm sure they'd understand that I was just trying to film something. Please remember, guys, if you're in a campground, do use the fire pit, okay? Because um, you get yourself a hefty fine. I didn't get one. <laughs> it's all good. But again, I just wanted to demonstrate. That'll work out just fine. And uh, I'm actually going to transfer that now into the fire pit and uh, get it roaring. Once again, Shane here with the Backyard Bushman. Um, said it all before. I really appreciate your support, guys, and uh, thanks for tuning in.